before we begin, we're going to begin with a prayer. So, dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the time that we have each morning uh, to open your word together. And we pray um, for one another. Uh, we pray for those that uh, are not always able to make it to these studies for various reasons and the struggles that they face. And um, we ask for your angels' care and protection over each person who is searching for truth. We invite your spirit into our hearts, into our lives, and that we can uh, have a revelation of Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, that as we look at all these numbers and dates and history, that um, we are to see what you are doing we know that you sit enthroned over all the play and counterplay of human events. You set up kings and take down kings. And we see your hand guiding us and guiding the events, not just in history, but in our lives. Uh, be with us now as we study together is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. So the last study, the morning study this week. So I really want to be able to pull this together today. And so what we have decided, at least at least I have decided in, in looking at this, is that we are going back to this Soviet-Afghan war. Now, it's a 3,341 days that this war occurs. And uh, that's going to be from, it's a 10-year period, but not really 10 years, obviously. 10 years would be. 3,652 days would be 10 years, 52.5 technically. So, you know, it's obviously less than that, 3,600. So we're, we're just really a little over uh, nine years. We're going from December 24th, 1979 uh, to February 15th, 1989. That's the Soviet-Afghan war. Now, we saw that war when we were... Uh, looking at Persia. And so we can see that, that that is something that happens before the time of the end. But here we have a verse where uh, Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. That is, the sons of the breakers of thy people is going to exalt itself to establish the vision. Now, we had already made an interpretation of these verses in connection with the end of Greece. So those are going to be addressing specifically events in our history that we're immediately embroiled in. But obviously here, since this is going to go over the line again as we address Rome, it's going to be a bit different. And so some of the symbols that we applied in the present truth application for the end of Greece, uh, they're not going to apply directly uh, to the end of Rome. But we do have things, Do we do have dates and numbers and symbols. Uh, one was if we take this entire verse and we add up the lexical count, um, I think it was this verse was 67,975. And that ends up being uh, 55 days longer than 187 or 100 and, yeah, 186 years, 186 actual years, which we have with that, because the number of days from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030 is 67,920. So you've got 75 minus 20 is 55. So it's just 55 days longer than that. And then we had placed that in... Um, Another way in that instead of we counted it from the time of the end, that is, we counted it from February 15th, 1798, and we counted then 67,975 days, and that brought us to 1980. I'm just trying to remember here. So I'm, I'm going to go there to the calendar converter. Let me just open up a new one here. Just hang on. Okay. So, okay. So this one's going to go and just makes it sure that I'm doing this right. So we're going to go to this February 15th date in 1798, and then we're going to count 67,975 days, and that's going to bring us to March 27th, 1984. So March 27th, 1984 is 
going to be 77 days. I think I'm trying to remember now. Oh, this is the one. Um, anyway, in the history of these, these presidents of the United States, uh, we had, yeah, this embassy thing. Uh, where is this here? I'm trying to see if I can find it. Looks like it disappeared. Ah, so it's, it's <clears throat> 77 days after January 10th, 1984. And January 10th, 1984 is going to be, uh, when they appoint, they, they, they resume formal uh, diplomatic relations with with the Vatican, right? So that's what's going to happen there. <clears throat> and so we have a number of symbols then that we can tie this together, right? So that's the idea. The idea is that, so if we just subtract 77 days from this here, you'll see we get this January 10th date. So when we go back to this date, oh, I need to put all these in here. I didn't save them. So we go 77. And then we're going to go all the way back from here. Six, seven, nine, seven, five days. Right. So that's the lexical sum of that verse. Oops, I went back. I, can't remember. I went the wrong direction. Minus 67, minus 75. That's going to bring us there. Minus 67, nine, seven, five. There we go. That'll bring us back to February 15th. So we just have these three dates in here. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the lexical sum from the time of the end here, and it brings us into a symbolic date that's 77 days past the time that they have this formal, reinstating this formal um, uh, diplomatic relations with the Vatican, right? So, and it's going to be from... Uh, I think it's 1867. I can't remember the date that we had there that they, that they haven't had formal diplomatic relations with the Vatican, right? So that's going to be after the Civil War. Um, so for some reason, I can't remember. I think it's the involvement, at least the idea is that it's because of the involvement of the Catholic Church in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. That's what was stated, whether that's the actual reason. I don't know. I don't know anything about that history in that regard. So, <clears throat> so the point is that we can tie this, these times of the ends together, right? We can tie the time of the end, uh, to events that are happening in that nine year period, um, the 19, uh, in the 1980s with this, um, the, the Soviet Afghan war and also uh, Ronald Reagan and the Pope. So they, they're going to be involved obviously in taking down the Soviet Union. So hopefully that's clear to everyone that this is not really anything new. We still don't know about this 3,341 days, whether there's some way in which we could get some other number of days so that these would somehow relate. We've, we've related them in different ways, but for now we're just going to leave those apart. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting, so this word stand up, so it says in those dead times, and that is going to be during this Soviet-Afghan war, there shall many, Philip, King of Macedon, and Antiochus III, uh, stand up, right? So they're going to stand up. Oh, the other thing that we, we can do here, um, just trying to remember how this goes. There was another number, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, but anyway, we, we'll we'll come to that. So what we had originally done with this, these verses in those times, it's we added this together, and word, this word, at the beginning of this verse. And we had come to that if we start at 9-11, it brings us to April 10th, 2024. So that's still a future date. And the 6256 brought us to October 28th, 2018, where Jeff does a summary of the 391, and that's going to be in the time in which we are talking about November 9th, 2019. And then we have with this, the many, uh, 7227, uh, we had counting from April 5th, 2030, we counted back to June 22nd, 2010. 
Now, obviously, we can't use that number on its on its own, right? So we can't use that seven two two seven as a span of time. It doesn't it doesn't really fit in as a span of time on its own, right? That in connected with the time at the end. This is that what application had to do with what's happening in the future, but we want to look at what's happening in the past. So that that period of time is a period of nineteen point seven eight years. Right, so 19.78 years, unless there's some place uh, that we can place that. In 1978 as a symbol, we, we don't have 1978 in this line. We started with 1979, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. So anyway, we have this many. Now here, historically, this is Philip V, King of Macedon, and Antiochus, plus some other groups uh, that are going to stand up, and we put there, make war. A propaganda against the king of the south. So if we're going to look at, at this, we would have to put Reagan and Pope John Paul II. Those are the ones that we would put in here. So they're now going to be actually individuals, obviously the United States. Now, when it says they stand up, now the word stand up, one of the things that's kind of interesting, if we take the total of this verse, remember it was 67,975. And that's, that means if we were to subtract this word from the total of all these Hebrew words, we'd have 62,000 or 62, yeah, 62, 62,000. Um, so it's kind of an interesting coincidence that this number happens to be, uh, well, Part of that, uh, you know, that it, the last three digits, 975, are the total, 67,975. Whether that's significant, I mean, obviously there's one in a thousand chance that you're going to have a word, you know, a specific word. If you picked a specific word and you compared it to the lexical count of the verse, that it's going to happen, right? Of course, you have lots of words. So... Uh, the chances that you're going to find one of those words um, having the last three digits of the total of the verse, you know, it's, I don't know, one in 50. So it's not not extremely unlikely or anything like that. Okay, so, and that's assuming 20 words, which I think there is about. Okay, now, so the making war, this standing up, this is the word that's that's very, very common here. In Daniel chapter 11, it's sometimes uh, translated as withstand. So the word itself, to take one stand, to stand still, to tarry, to make a stand, to stand upright, to arise. Right. So it's got lots of different definitions to it. Now, it occurs lots of times. So there's 523 occurrences in the King James. And in Daniel chapter 11, it occurs a lot. So it's going to occur um, as the word stand uh, well, repeatedly. I mean, it's going to be there in Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 8 and chapter 11 and uh, chapter 12. It's also translated as set. So in Daniel 11, 11, they shall set forth a great multitude, right? So that's going to be the idea there. So when we look at this verse and we look at, 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 um, that they're going to, many shall stand up. Now we're, we, we say make war, right? So that's what's going to happen there. Now in the history dealing with 1989, what is it that they do? Now, there is propaganda there. So what, what would we put there instead of just the word propaganda to describe what's going to happen when they stand up? against the king of the south in that history okay so what are we going to put there what is this how do they stand up are you talking about disinformation okay so we're looking at 1989 yeah so there is dis disinformation star wars right. <clears throat> are you talking about indoctrination okay yeah so i mean we're we're going to know what happens with <clears throat> poland for one so what happens in poland and how does that relate to what happens uh, with the fall of the Soviet Union? 
Okay, what was happening in Poland that that led to this? You're talking about solidarity? Yeah, solidarity. Is solidarity a parallel to taking a stand, standing up? Everyone's right? of it, yes. Okay, so so when we look at that word in Brown Drivers Briggs, it says uh, the word amad means to stand, remain, endure, take one stand. Uh, to stand still, to tarry, delay, remain, continue, abide, endure, persist, be steadfast, to make a stand, hold one's ground, to stand upright, remain standing, rise, be erect. So would that solidarity be what's being referred to in this verse? So could we put solidarity there? Does that make sense? Well, solidarity was a movement at that time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the movement in Poland, and we would say that Reagan and the Pope were they behind solidarity? I would say that they were very much behind it. Yeah, right. So when it says that they're going to stand up, make you know, make war, what's happens initially, but here we're just going to say that this is the solidarity movement in Poland. That that's what's happening. Okay, so this and this is. I mean, we have the Soviet Afghan War, of course, that happens. Now the history of solidarity. Maybe we have some dates attached to that that we can use, right? So that's what I'm trying to find out. <clears throat> but solidarity uh, so, was also a trade union. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, it was a trade union. So I just want to get some stuff from Wikipedia. Maybe we can get some dates. That's all I'm saying it's that we can use in this. So it's founded in August 1980 at the Leningrad shipyard in Gdansk, Poland. Subsequently, it was the first independent train union in, in a Warsaw Pact country to be recognized by the state. Uh, the union's membership peaked at 10 million in September 1981, representing one-third of the country's working population. So it says it was uh, founded, that is, recognized in August 1980, August 31st, 1980. And they had their first Congress, September 7th, 1980. And then they're registered November 10th, 1980. So it's kind of interesting. November 10th is close to November 9th. Now, the August 31st date, I've actually run into that date, August 31st, 1980, when I was doing some of these numbers before. I don't remember which numbers led me to that, uh, where I was counting from or what, what, but I would keep running into this August 31st, 1980 date for some reason. And so maybe I can find it again. Anyway, so that's what we have. So obviously, if we go from, uh, well, that's kind of interesting. So I'm just going to put these in here. Okay, so interesting number here that we have. So I'll show you. So we're going to have uh, 17 days uh, later, because September 17th is 17 days after August 31st. They're going to have their first Congress. Now, when we put that in, and I'll show you here on this screen. So the number of days of the Soviet Afghan war was, uh, 3,341. So if we go from this date and we do, so the September 17th, 1980, and we do an inclusive count. So, uh, so I have to put in 3,340. We're going to come to November 9th, 1989. So basically, the period of time from when they have their first Congress to November 9th, 1989, is the same number of days that the Soviet-Afghan war lasted. Is that significant? Does it tie those two together? Would we agree that that, that ties it together? We have the Soviet-Afghan war that we looked at, and now we're looking at uh, the rise of the solidarity movement in Poland, and to November 9th, 1989. So they have their first Congress. It's going to be on the 300, uh, 3341st day. So it says 3340 there, but that's a cardinal count. So if we did an inclusive count, it'd be 3,341 days from their first Congress to the fall of the Soviet Union. Significant? It may be. Yeah. I, I would think that we would have to take this as, as significant. That it's, it shows that there is a parallel between these two events or these two symbols. So this standing up, 
uh, I think is quite important. And so I do think that we have to put solidarity there, right? That that is uh, when the Reagan and, and Pope John Paul II, you know, stand up against the King of the South, the King of the South, of course, being the Soviet Union, right? So in this history, when we put this here, we have to say this is the USSR, right? It's not Biden and the Democrats, because this is a, this is the beginning of this history, not the end of it. So they're going to stand up against the King of the South. Now, um, so we got uh, some other numbers here that I'm going to try to. So there's something else I'm forgetting. But anyway, for now, we're just going to go. Um, so I know there's something to do with the symbol of the King of the South. I just can't remember what it is. So we're just going to say, of course, that's going to be the USSR. Now, also the robbers of thy people. That says also the robbers of thy people shall um, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. Now, we would put the papacy in there. Now, I already put Reagan and the Pope John Paul II as standing up, as the ones that are standing up. Now, this word, also the robbers of thy people. Now, also is not necessarily... Um, there in the Hebrew, because it's just basically the sons of the robbers, right? That's what we have. And we, we noted that when we added those two Hebrew words together, uh, we got the number Shiva, which relates, release, relates to, uh, uh, that's the word that's used in Leviticus 26, verse 18, 21, 24, and 28 as seven times, right? So it relates to our 777 structure. So that's how we did, when we did the application for what's happening now. Now, as far as attaching that to 1989, of course, we can see 1989 at the beginning is connected to 1798 at the end, plus 1989 has this connection from Daniel chapter five, right? So we would just say 1863 to 1989. This is the 126 shekels of Daniel five. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm just taking the sons of the breakers and getting the Shiva number, the seven times. And instead of just looking back to Leviticus 26, though we are looking at Leviticus 26, we can also connect Leviticus 26 to Daniel chapter 5, right? And so so we can take the end of the prophetic mirror, um, 1863 to 1989, the 126 years there, right? So I, I think that should be accepted right it's not it's not something that's uh, way out there or anything it's something we already have made a connection with so we know that 1989 when we had understood the prophetic mirror because we understood 1989 first and then we had the prophetic mirror then we could see the 126 shekels now parminder used this for time setting right he's gonna he's gonna go 120 shekels 126 shekels from uh, 1888 and count to 2014 and then he's going to do a different count to get 151 and so he's going to count 151 from 1863 to 2014 as well parminder didn't create the 126 shekels right he didn't he wasn't he didn't notice this he just simply tried to apply it to 2014 and there is a correctness in what he's doing as far as the numbers exist and and 2014 is significant He's just wrong about what he's predicting. So he's he's not using a proper method of study to draw the conclusion that he does. So the conclusion is going to be wrong because he's starting with a false premise. Need to get rid of this. Put an extra bracket in here. So we're going to say that 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 symbol, the sons of the robbers, is going to give us 1989 as well. So we're going to say that this is the papacy uh, that's involved, right? So I was saying that the word also, we, we could just put here, because uh, in the Hebrew itself, the word also isn't there. What, what they do is they have a, 
a prefix attached to the word. So I'm just trying to see where that is in the Hebrew here. It should just be and the sons. Yeah, so they just put a vav in front of the word sons. And and so that vav in Hebrew can easily be just translated as and. It's just a conjunction usually meaning and, and the. So that's one of the things it means. So to translate it as also is just kind of a paraphrase. So if we if we just look at it as also it means in addition to this is some other power. But here in this case, it would just say, and the sons of the robbers of thy people, right? The sons of the breakers, right? So the sons of the breakers, that can include the papacy. So they could still be part of that group that's that's the many. So the many that stand up against the king of the south. One of those many is the robbers of thy people. Rome, the papacy. But in this case, what's what's being focused upon is the fact that they're exalting themselves to establish the vision. Now, I know there's some stuff that, that we need to also recognize here about John Paul II. Now, with John Paul II, um, there are a few, there are some events that we need to take into account. What happened to Pope John Paul on May 13th, 1981? Didn't someone attempt to assassinate him? What's the significance of that date, May 13th? 13th day of the fifth month. What about May 13th, 1917? Are you speaking about the visions that those three kids had? Right, right. The Lady of Fatima, right? So when when Pope John Paul II, there is an attempted assassination on his life on May 13th, uh, 1981. And so here's what it says. This is, um, I'll show you this. This is what I'm reading. This is from the University of Dayton. All about Mary and Pope John Paul II in Fatima. The message of Fatima tangibly intervenes in John Paul's life on May 13th, 1981. The Pope considered the day of his attempted assassination not coincident. While still recuperating in the hospital, He asked for the documents concerning the third secret of Fatima and read them on July 18th, 1981. So is there anything here that we should pay attention to? Okay, we got July 18th. Now, so we have a number of things here. So the first thing that we have is the Pope's assassination attempt. It's going to be on the date. It would be, I think it's 64 years after the the Lady of Fatima appeared to these three kids, right? 1917, seven, yeah, so that's going to be 74, 60, so 64 years later, uh, there's going to be this assassination attempt on Pope John Paul. Uh, now, I don't think that there is any connection that somebody chose that date purposefully, as far as I understand. I don't think that it was done in that way. Now, the Pope is going to believe that that Mary had protected him, but he's going to look at these documents or ask for them and read them on July 18th, 1981. So we have a July 18th date, okay? Now, that would be significant, right? So we have connected with this. Now, not everybody was was there and since the videos had been taken down and I don't think we even have access to them anymore. Uh, but Tess did presentations in 2018 and where she's going to begin is with this story about Pope John Paul II and the Lady of Fatima. So she's going to go through that history. Now, I know a lot of Seventh-day Adventists were really familiar with that history. I'd heard it you know, thrown around all the time. I had no idea about it at the time. And so, but we we can now look at that and we can say that there is some significance here, right? That that this this can fit on our lines in some way. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of these dates here. Now, we also have another significant date. So you have, yeah, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Okay, but one thing that that you're addressing here, 
Yeah. Okay. The yeah. May 13th of 1917 on the biblical calendar is the yeah. 20th day of the second month. Right. So you got a, a 220 there, right? And, now, and then you're going to have the miracle of Fatima. That's going to be uh, October 13th, right? I'm just starting to put these dates in here. So we got um, these dates here, right? May 15th. And then we're going to have 1981. We're going to go back here to May 13th. Okay. So we got number one's number of days here. Now it's going to be, um, so one of the things about the Fatima visions that, that I thought was interesting is that it's 153 days. So, so I've known this before. I haven't really talked about it. Yeah. And May 13 can relate to 153. So it's 153 days to the miracle of Fatima. And back at this time, I was really studying, uh, Samuel Snow's letters. Right, which are going to be part of the July 18, 2020 prediction. And so I noticed this 153 days because that's the number of days from when Samuel Snow writes his first letter, uh, February 16th, 1844, to the publishing of his last letter on July 18, 1844. So it's 153 cardinal days. If you do it as ordinal, it's 154, which is 77 plus 77. But it's cardinal count of 153. Okay. So, so I think that's pretty interesting that, that we have that. Okay. That makes sense to people. So, so we have this symbol of the 153. Uh, that's a short form of the 1533 and definitely relates to our lines to Samuel Snow's letters to July 18th. So the fact that the Pope on May 15th, or May 13th, pardon me, is going to be, uh, there's going to be assassination attempt. And then on July 18th, he's going to ask for and read these documents about the Lady of Fatima visions. We would have to say that that's extremely significant, that this isn't some, some mere coincidence, that this relates to what, what we're talking about, right? Now, there is, um, I don't know, on the Feast of the Annunciation during the Year of Redemption in 1984, John Paul II in spiritual union with all the bishops of the world. Now, okay, so the Feast of the Annunciation, what date is that in 1984? You know, this movie. So that's going to be March 25th. Is that when it is? So it's March 25th. So they're, they're going to say... Uh, it's commemorating the, both the belief that the spring equinox was not only the day of God's act of creation, but also the beginning of Christ's redemption of that same creation. All Christian antiquity held March 25th is the actual day of Jesus' death. Okay, so that's something I didn't know. Okay, so we're going to look into this a little bit more later on. Uh, right now, what we are establishing is this history. Actually, what I should do is go back to this Okay, so so we have this history here dealing with tying this past history to this history. And, you know, it's going to produce some some numbers that we, you know, can analyze. But at, at the present time, we're just we're saying that there is this connection. So this October 13th date, it, it becomes a part of our history, right? Because it's going to be on October 13th, 2018, that I'm going to count the 391 and a half days to November 9th, 2019. But here we're, we're at the beginning. So we're looking at the beginning of this history. And we probably could have applied some of these symbols uh, to our history where we are now. But right now we're looking at 1989. Okay. So we got a number of these dates here. And, and they have this other date, which was in 19... 84. So it's going to be at the Feast of the Annunciation in 1984. So it's going to be this March 25th is the Feast of the Annunciation. And it is this very day in 1984 that his predecessor, Pope St. John Paul II, because it was just reading from the Ukrainian Catholic Archiparchy of Winnipeg, um, 
So this is going to be 1984. So we could probably put that, that date in there as well. So 1984, we already have March 27th. So I don't know if we really need to add the March 25th, but maybe I will. So that's just going to be two days earlier. So two days before that, which is on the Sunday, we're going to have this rededication or whatever it is, uh, what's the word that's used again, consecration of Ukraine to the mother of God. Ru yeah, he'll actually consecrate Russia and Ukraine. So the Ukraine and Russia. So I'm just reading a little bit here on another place. So I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. But it's it's kind of interesting that it's so close to that March 27th date that we got uh, by counting 67,975 uh, days um, from when the Pope is taken captive. And, of course, the date there, uh, the March 25th, on the biblical calendar, what's the significance of the 21st day of the 12th month? 12 times 21 is 252, right? So, so that would be significant. So we have these symbols of dealing with uh, the papacy. And we know that this is with Pope John Paul. Uh, this is all part of, of, of the motivations that he has for what he's doing. Now we know that, um, uh, the, the assassination uh, attempt on um, Ronald Reagan, that is how, how long before Pope John Paul's assassination attempt? I think it's before. Oh, March 30th, 1981. That was the attempt on Reagan. Right. Okay, good. Yeah, because I knew it. I, I was pretty sure it was before. And so we probably should put that in there as well. So you got May 15th, and then we're going to have March 30th. It's going to be 44 days between those two assassination attempts. Okay, now we said March 30th, right? Yeah. And did you say that the attempt on the Pope was on May 15th? May 13th. May 13th. Yeah. Okay. So that would be 45 inclusive days. Yeah, that would be 45 inclusive days. So you get to May 13th, and then you're going to have, so this is in 1981, right? Now, we do have these meetings between Reagan and, and the Pope. So the first time they're going to meet is at Fairbanks International Airport. But it's not going to be till June 6, 1987, that uh, they meet at Vatican City, right? So, so their first meeting is May 2nd, 1984. So it's going to be, oh, pardon me. They actually meet June 7th, 1982. That's the first time they meet. Okay, so June 7th, 1982. So it's going to be about a year later. So obviously at that time, you know, they, they have the previous year, they both have had assassination attempts on their life. And, and so that's one of the things that's going to unite them. So we can see for, for the Pope, he has this assassination attempt. And that becomes part this uh, the documents dealing with Fatima have something to do with Russia, right? There is this, and I don't remember all the details uh, when Tess went through all of this, but she dealt with all of this. And, and Jeff, that was one of the things that sort of fascinated him is that this is something that he had looked into in detail before. And here Tess is presenting this sort of information that related to what the movement had understood prior to 9-11. Uh, These were things that were being studied in that history. And I know a lot of Adventists were, you know, this was all leading up to the Sunday law, all these things happening with the Pope and Reagan. And, and of course, the Lady of Fatima. And uh, so those events, they were considered important. I'm just looking up something else here dealing with, okay, so there is, there's also another manifestations of Mary, which began on June 25th, 1981. Um, so they're going to be the earliest messages are recorded from 1981 to 83. So this is something that the Jeff has generally dismissed as being significant. So I, I don't know if people are know about uh, medic 
and I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, uh, Meta, Met, Medjugorje, something like that. Medjugorje. So these were recorded in French, and, and there's these different messages. You know, in 1981, there's a number of them in June, uh, and I've never studied into these before. It just, it's just in this history that you have this happening, right? So that was what I was interested in. These messages still keep going, so I'm not sure exactly because uh, there's still messages in 2023. So, for instance, the the last one was December 25th, 2023. So I don't know. I don't know enough about these. But all I'm saying is that you're going to have these messages uh, beginning in 1981. And I guess there's uh, the 25th of the month becomes significant there, but I'm just seeing. Okay, anyway, I'm going to leave that for now. <clears throat> so that's just another line which uh, of, of inquiry that we could look at. Okay, so, so we can see the significance of this, at least in part. So we, we don't know all of the... Uh, it is interesting that when we go back to uh, just another thing dealing with uh, uh, solidarity. So we got September 7th, 1980, and we have that uh, March 27th, 1984. It happens to be uh, all the symbols of July 18, 2020 in that, for that span of time. So that's the one that ties us to the time of the end ties us here. So there there might be other ways in which we can look at it. So we have a number of things. We have solidarity. We have uh, the assassination attempts of uh, Reagan and John Paul that becomes this um, catalyst, I guess, for what's happening, at least with Pope John Paul II, and unites him with Reagan, the fact that they both have these assassination attempts on their lives, and it, and this helps create a bond between them. Now, I remember back in the 1990s, people would talk about how they both received a deadly wound. Now, did they receive a deadly wound in an assassination attempt? Yes. No, because a deadly wound would cause your death. They were wounded, but it wasn't a deadly wound. Another way to say deadly wound is wounded to death. But another time that's how it's translated in uh, the Revelation chapter 11. It's going to be translated as wounded unto death, dealing with uh, the two witnesses, right? So it's the same idea. It's a deadly wound, wounded to death. So they received wounds, assassinated attempts, but they weren't deadly wounds. And even in just a symbolic sense, they weren't deadly wounds, right? It doesn't doesn't mark the end of the papacy. It doesn't mark the end of the United States or anything, right? So back in the 90s, people were talking about this. And that's why I have this opinion, I guess, is to me that it wasn't a deadly wound. It didn't parallel the deadly wound in 1798 or any way like that. They, they, this is just something that ties them together because they both have attempts on their lives, Okay. That, is that okay, uh, Dwight? Not stepping on your toes or anything? You're not stepping on my toes. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you would agree with me on that, that it's not really a deadly wound. It looks like one that could lead to death, but your point is taken. Yeah. And, and so I don't, I just don't think that we can make a parallel between what happens to the papacy in 1798 to these assassination attempts. Now there is, a relationship. So I'm not saying there isn't a relationship, but what we see is that they don't receive a deadly wound, right? There is an attempt to bring a deadly wound, but there isn't a deadly wound itself. So when we look at the, and I should do this here. So we got the number of days from the deadly wound, right? Which is February 15, 1798. To Reagan's deadly wound is 66,882. You got 66,882. So that's 183 years and a decimal, which is going to be about 40, 41 and a quarter days. Of course, it's going to be 183 years and um, we have to add 44 days, right? So 85 
So this 183 years between what happened in 1798 and what's happening then in 1981, it's obviously 183 is a symbol. It's a symbol of of what? The Julian calendar, the Gregorian calendar, it's going to be six months. So it's just something to kind of, yeah, half, half a year. It also, it connects to uh, Palmoni, right? Just the digits of Palmoni, 813, right? Okay, so so we have these different um, different events, and, and there might be more, you know, connected that, that we can see. But the idea then is that these, these, these individuals, the Pope and Reagan, uh, they now unite. That is, they're going to, to make a stand, right? They're going to stand up. The Pope stands up. And, and also we got, uh, so we're going to say here again, there shall many stand up and that word and the sons of the breakers of thy people shall exalt themselves. Well, that's just the word stand up, right? Not five, nine, seven, five. It's just that. Exalt is just that same word. So the Pope himself is going to stand up. Now, here, in when we originally had done this, the papacies shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, to support Egypt, right? So in this history, so we look at the original history. The original history is that when Rome rises up, it rises up to support Egypt, the king of the south. Now, in this history, is the papacy supporting the king of the south to establish the vision? So that's originally what happens in the historical application. Who is the papacy supporting? He's supporting Poland, right? Agreed. Okay. So so in this history, he's not supporting wokeism, but he's supporting solidarity. So this is just kind of repeating what we have here. So... I'm just going to say supports Poland. So when he supports Poland, because there's there's a lot of history here. Uh, one is the Pope is going to go to Poland, and and you got this guy, uh, Lake, uh, what's his name, Walensa. Um, how do you say his name? Lech Lech Walensa. Lech Walensa. Yeah. Okay. So so he's going to be this person who's in charge of the solidarity movement in Poland, right? If I remember my history correctly. Correct. Okay. Okay. So now we got, um, I'm just trying to think here. So we got this word to establish the vision. Now this word establish a uh, five, three, seven, five. If we put it as days, it's going to be uh, 14 years and about, uh, 200, you know, 261 and a half days. <clears throat> so the 262 or 261 in, in practical terms. Now I need to put this July 18th date in here. So I, I keep switching back and forth these screens here, what I'm looking at. So the Pope's going to have this assassination attempt. I'm just going to put July 18th in here. Just, just looking at something there. Okay. So we got July 18th, 1981. Something in you. So we need some more dates in here, but um, we'll leave them for now. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit to sort out. <clears throat> so I didn't mean to throw so many new numbers in front of you, but we're going to have to examine those in a bit more detail. So the, the papacy is going to support Poland. Now, now to say that Poland is the is Egypt, is is that reasonable? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're coming against the king of the south, but but here in exalting themselves to establish the division in our history, they're not going to be supporting Egypt, right? They're going to be supporting Poland. So that's a part of the Soviet Union. Well, they're, they're supporting a, a trade union, which is leftish. It may be on the Soviet, but it is still. OK, left. it still could be associated with the king of the south. OK. That, that's a good point, right? So we know trade unions are bad things, right? According to the spirit of prophecy. So they're going to do this to establish the vision. Now we, we looked at a lot of what establishing the vision was in, in, 
in our present truth application. We looked at the word chazon. Um, so that's going to be the vision of the, you know, the 2520, right? So there was a number of things that were in there that we looked at. Um, it's a period of six years and 186 days. So establishing the vision 2377, I know that there's, there's going to be something in there that's going to relate to this, but I can't remember what it is. So I'm going to have to come back to that at some other time. But, but that number is going to relate to uh, these dates that we have. Okay. So I'm going to have to dig it up again. <clears throat> So that was their footnote. So the Polish, put it here, Polish trade union. So they're going to establish the vision. So we, we can see that that's going to connect to 1989 to the Sunday one. That's what the vision. So we can still keep that in there. Uh, but they shall fall, right? Now, in this issue, or this, this, uh, the one that's going to fall, of course, is the one that, uh, exalts itself to establish the vision. So, I mean, this initially points to you know, pagan Rome and papal Rome. It still would apply to the close of probation and the seven last plagues because it's still something future. But here instead, with this 1989 to the Sunday law, we're addressing more of the 1989 part at this point rather than the Sunday law part, where in the other application, the focus was on the Sunday law. Now we're just dealing with the beginning of this period prior to November 9th, right? So that's what this history is in verse 14, right? So we have just a secondary application, an application dealing with Rome itself. Any other thoughts about this, what we've done here with verse 14? In now applying this to the rise, with, with the rise of Rome, applying to the beginning of our line rather than the end of our line. It seems pretty solid. We have the Soviet-Afghan War. We have Reagan and Pope John Paul II. So we got this solidarity, right? So they're going to stand up against the King of the South, which is going to be the Soviet Union. And then we're going to have Robbers of Thy People, 126 shackles of Daniel 5, dealing with Leviticus 26, being the papacy, of course, uh, sons of the breakers, and then of thy people. So, so this is going to be Rome that is the sons of the breakers of thy people. That's the papacy in this case. Now they exalt themselves. That is, they're going to support, papacy is going to support the Polish trade union. And, and this is to establish the vision, right? So it has to exalt itself. And then you can see that that's going to be that vision is in our history, 1989 to the Sunday law. They shall fall right at the end. So does that seem reasonable to people? So verse 15, so the king of the north. Now we had some things connected with this symbol. The phrase, the king of the north produces um, 11,256 days, which is 30 years. And of course, that relates to the 30 years, right? So, um, and if we add the shall come, the total is 12,191 days, which could be counted from November 9th, 1989 to March 27th, 2023. So we have a March 27th in this history. We have a March 27th there as well. Okay. So there's going to be some more symbols here dealing with verse 15. So the king of the north. Now, we're saying that this, in, in the application that we had made before, this is republicanism in the U.S. But this here, now we usually say, well, the king of the north is the papacy, and it comes with the armies, so the military power and the economic power of the U.S. You know, in this case, we'll just say it's the USA, right? Shall come. Now, originally, that's going to be, you know, the Battle of Paneum. So we're just going to say that this is November 9th. Uh, 1989, right? So that's where we're putting this. We're saying that November 9th, 1989 is the Battle of Paneum, just as 1798 is the Battle of Raffia. The King of the South conquering the King of the North. Raffia. King of the North coming against him like a whirlwind with horses and many chariots and ships, right? Okay, so that's that's November 9th, 1989. 
the days of the whirlwind it's called um, by is it time magazine when they go back and they talk about what actually happened with is the new, newsweek newsweek okay new newsweek an insignificant uh, periodical today if it still exists i don't know if i ever hear anything about newsweek but okay so we can put that november 9th 1989 and then they're going to cast up a mount so initially this is going to be the siege of and what happens to sidon right so there's a siege there's going to be persecution we're going to say in that history but in our history, it's a little bit different. So this casting up of a mount, we have to figure out what that is. Taking of the most fenced cities, how would we apply that in our time? The arms of the South, what is that? So one of the things that we should see in this history is a transition. So after November 9th, 1989, a transition occurs, right? That is the King of the South symbol moves to the UN. So so we have to try to understand that, what's what's going to happen in this history. And the King of the North, it, it's going to be, uh, you know, we say it's 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 the papacy, but it, it's always combined here with this military power, because the papacy doesn't have its own military power. But so we're going to have to sort that through. And then as we start to go through all of these verses in Daniel chapter 11, these verses are going to have to speak to our history in some way. So it's going to, um, now it doesn't mean that it's going to just continue all the way through to the end, because obviously when we get here to 40 and 45, we know how it is applied and then we have to understand, well, it'll probably be applied to our immediate history in some way. So I'm not sure how it's going to work because we haven't done this yet, right? So we're just looking at something that we have never done before with with this um, application of Rome from this time from, you know, 1979, illustrating that history all the way up till, you know, the close of probation, right, basically. So there's a number of things that we're going to have to have to sort through. And right now, my mind is getting very scattered on all of these different issues. So let's just think about. So we need to look at um, a little more detail regarding uh, the Lady of Fatima, the assassination attempts of Reagan and Pope John Paul. Right. So those are going to have to be understood and how they relate to this history. Obviously. What happens with the Soviet Union itself, how it falls, uh, the role of Lech Walesa, and also uh, the Solidarity, Solidarity Trade Union, you know, and, and even things like uh, Perestroika and Glasnost in, in, the, in the Soviet Union, how those things relate. And, and the other thing that we haven't really addressed here in, in any of this is we got Mikhail Gorbachev, right? So he's, He's part of this history as well and how, how he plays, whether he's represented in these verses or not, I don't know. So it's, it's going to take a lot of work. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. And um, I'm really wanting people to, to take time to look at these things on your own. I mean, also, you know, maybe you should give assignments. Jeff used to do that. He'd, he'd give assignments for people to, you know, research different parts of of the study uh, that we were doing. You know, so you might say, well, you know, you should study solidarity. You should study the Soviet-Afghan war. You should study the assassinations attempts on Reagan and the Pope. You know, somebody should be studying uh, the Lady of Fatima. Another person may be studying Metagorge, right? All those types of things, you know, could be done. But even if we do that, we still have to kind of go through this together. So I know I have a lot of reading to do, but we did get some insights today. I think that we, by, by looking at this, that can confirm that what we're doing makes sense. And to try to bring some of this chronology, some of these numbers of these Hebrew definitions into this as well, uh, that's going to be important. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Because I don't want to move ahead right now. I know this isn't very visual yet some point I'm going to put this all together more visually. 
but I, every time I try to draw these different lines, it's like there's, there's too many elements. And so I have to be able to understand it more fully. And then I can simplify it and show what the main, the main elements are. Okay. Any final thoughts? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and um, all the things that you are teaching us. I pray for each person that your angels can watch over them. And may your Holy Spirit continue to speak to us, help us to trust in you fully. And um, we pray for our loved ones, that you can watch over them. And we just pray for your strength and help, that we can reflect your character. Help us in our times of trial. Uh, that we can joy in persecution and in sufferings, and that we can see the purposes that you are working out in our lives. Bring us together again um, in studies um, this, this weekend to understand your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.